On the west bank of the Nile River, just outside Luxor, an area known as Thebes, the mortuary temple of Medinet Habu, erected circa 1170 BCE, is one of the largest and best preserved remaining memorial temples in Egypt. It measures approximately 1,000 feet in length east to west and about 700 feet in width north to south. A huge mud brick enclosure wall surrounds the temple. The temple is of orthodox design and closely resembles the layout of the nearby Ramesseum. A sacred lake was originally situated in front of and to the north of the front gate, along with a large harbor key and a connecting canal to the Nile. But all traces of these are sadly now vanished, filled in with gravels and paved over with a modern road that services the adjacent small village of Kamlola. The first pylon, which contains suites of apartments for priests and staff, leads into an open courtyard lined with colossal statues of Ramesses III as Osiris on the right-hand side and uncarved columns on the left-hand side. Originally a, a large roofed hypostyle hall, the central columns were toppled by an earthquake in 27 BCE. The temple is connected to the royal palace in the harem area by a portico in the south wall of this courtyard where it is thought the pharaoh greeted the public and observed festival celebrations. The second pylon leads us into a peristyle hall, again featuring columns of Ramses III. This leads up to a ramp that leads through a columned portico to the third pylon and then into the third and final hypostyle hall which has also lost its roof and most of the upper portions of its columns to the earthquake. The perimeter walls of this hall housed a number of small shrines and chapels devoted to the triad of Thebes, along with small treasuries. We pause to sample several locations in these chapels for infrasound, as we had been told that many people report unworldly sensations inside them but our detector showed no activity whatsoever, and this was also the result throughout the temple complex as a whole. The hypostyle halls were divided by enormous portals with double doors over 30 feet tall and 12 feet wide, said to have been covered with gold sheets. These doors, of course, vanished in antiquity, but the huge hinge holes in the ceiling blocks and the drawbar sockets in the walls indicate their massive scale. Throughout the temple precincts, one can observe literally thousands of very deeply carved hieroglyphs, averaging over 70 millimeters in depth, that were originally set with gemstone inlays of obsidian, agate, carnelian, turquoise, lapis, and jasper. These were all plundered in unknown antiquity, and the marks from the pry bars and chisels used to extract them bear mute testimony to the violence of their removal. Paints, whose pigments were also derived from powdered gemstone, were used to decorate the walls, ceilings, and columns of the temple, and in the most protected areas, the colors still stand out vividly, most notably on the ceilings above the gates between each hall. A pair of beautifully carved representations in granite of Ramses III and Thoth remain to one side of the central aisle in the third hypostyle hall, Originally, they faced a similar pair of Ramesses and Maat on the opposite side of the aisle, but those are now destroyed. On our way back out through the temple, past the first pylon, we pause to investigate a small ruin standing alone on the north side of the entrance that featured a steep, narrow passage leading down several yards to a shallow pool. We wondered if it may have had some connection with the now filled in sacred lake or perhaps functioned as part of a nilometer, but our guides were unable to identify its function. Rounding up everyone in our group, we proceeded to a local restaurant in the village of Kam Lola to enjoy a relaxing lunch, a venue which we recommend highly, card in the corner above, to our video spotlight on Mohammed's Cafe.